YouTubers, this is uh, Steve from uh, Slayer 3N1. Today I'm going to talk to you about my Colt uh, LE AR version that I have. Before I do that, uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some topics that uh, would sort of enlighten some of the people who do know anything about guns. Number one, <clears throat> let me first start off with the concept of what a semi-automatic firearm is. This handgun that you see here is a um, Springfield Armory uh, variant of a 1911. It's basically a stainless steel uh, upper and lower. It's very heavy. It's pretty old actually. It's called the V11 version where you have uh, slits cut on top for the gases to be released from the barrel. Okay, so this is a semi-automatic. What's the definition of what a semi-automatic is? Semi-automatic is <clears throat> when you have this magazine here. I'm going to load up some dummy rounds. Those are dummy rounds, okay? But this is the actual size of 45 caliber. In the back of this 45 caliber, you have a primer. So when the striker in here hits the primer, it causes a ignition that ignites the gunpowder that's in here and basically causes the implosion inside the barrel. And the front part of this, this copper covered object in front is called the bullet. The whole thing is called a round. A lot of people use the term bullet very loosely, but in actual fact, the bullet is the front portion. It's lead and it's covered by copper. So again, when the striker hits the primer, it ignites it. It causes the uh, gunpowder in here to light up and it causes implosion inside the barrel in which the front projectile gets sent out the barrel towards its destination. Okay? That's the reason why I said do not point at anything you're not willing to destroy. Be careful of where you point your gun, right? <clears throat> so going back to what the definition of semi-automatic is, you have dummy rounds in here. Okay? I'm gonna load this up and the round is going to go get into the chamber. So now the hammer is cocked back and the hammer is ready to fire, right? When I release, press the trigger, the hammer gets released, it hits a striker that basically then goes and hits a primer and inside here is basically where the round is kept. It implodes and it sends the projectile out to the front and the gas in, uh, that's basically built up in here causes the, mag uh, the slide to go backwards to release the empty casing okay, and load up the next round. Okay? So let's simulate by hitting the uh, pressing on the trigger. Sorry. That causes an explosion. It explodes, implodes inside here, and the projectile goes out. The gas causes the slide to slide back, and the next round gets chambered in. So the empty casing flies off, and it's now ready for the next round. And that's what they call semi-automatic, because every time you click, it basically causes the implosion, and the slight cycles each time right you can't keep pressing this all the time right because once the hammer goes down in this case let me fire it one more time once the hammer goes down this is a semi-automatic the hammer is not doesn't get cocked like a double action it's a single action the hammer is already finishes duty it is waiting for the slide to slide back in the chamber and release the next round 
okay? Because the empty magazine, so the, basically the chamber stays open. So that's what pretty much um, all semiotics works on. You know, the definition where people say, oh, well, semiotics, as long as you press the trigger down, it fires. No, it does not. Every time you basically click, the hammer goes and fires it. And there are times when basically the round is bad. That means the uh, striker hits the primer. It's got a bad primer. Implosion does not happen. Because implosion does not happen, nothing happens here. You just have to eject the round out and load another round in. Okay? That's the principle of how semi-automatics work. And that's the same thing with the Colt. It's a semi-automatic firearm. Okay, let's uh, pause and I'll get to the video next. Okay, this is the Colt uh, LE edition of an AR rifle. Um, in the good old days, they used to call them the Colt uh, military and police uh, edition. It's a semi-automatic, it's not an automatic. And since uh, Colt uh, provides uh, AR rifles uh, to the uh, military, this is a, a copy of what the military has, right? And I want you guys to understand the difference. They look a, the same, like an M16 rifle. That's what the US forces have. And this is, looks exactly like that. But because this is a civilian edition, it's a semi-automatic. So a lot of people get this misnomer that, well, because the military has it, we basically have an automatic firearm. That's not correct. A regular US citizen does not have the right to carry an automatic firearm. They have to go through some major hoops to basically get permission to basically purchase one. So most police agencies, uh, you know, if they are really rich, they do buy their police officers uh, automatic uh, AR variants. But most agencies, they just buy them uh, regular AR-15 like the rest of civilians. So uh, don't get mistaken by that, okay? So most police officers that you're seeing on, on TV, on CNN, during a live shooting, they do have civilian semi-automatic AR. Only very rare agencies that have the money to buy automatics do they buy it. You know, the automatic version, the M16 edition of a Colt, okay? So, in this case here, when I got this, I um, made some changes to this AR. This AR basically came with a quad rail and, um, you know, I just didn't like it because it used to cut my hands. So, I said, let me take it out. So, I replaced the front uh, portion, that's this portion here with a um, M-lock rail system, lightweight M-lock rail system. And I replaced the front flash hider um, with uh, uh, one of those uh, generic, uh, let me get this zoomed in a bit. And this is a generic, uh, Compensator, I call it muzzle compensator instead of a flash hider. So, when you're uh, if anybody's standing next to this rifle, they will feel the uh, uh, the percussion from this rifle because those gases that are coming out on the side on both sides of the rifle will send a plume of blast of air towards your face. So, you know, uh, that's the interesting point I, I I was not aware of that I was shooting this rifle and a friend of mine was standing behind he could feel the uh, percussion from the rifle blow at his face okay so that's one of the things I modified and um, if you look up here I'm using regular uh, three to nine uh, radical scope it doesn't have a uh, lit radical i've taken the batteries out because uh, i prefer to use the scope without the ba batteries so the radicals can be moved 
uh, for windage and elevation, but it does its job, so I don't have to depend on batteries for siding. And that's the reason why I don't have uh, hard um, flip-up sights um, on this rifle. I just try to keep it as minimalistic as possible. The next thing I, I did change out was the trigger system. This trigger system, let me zoom back real close in. This trigger system is uh, from a velocity trigger and uh, it's a three pound trigger, lightweight trigger. Um, also, I added a bad lever. The bad lever is that uh, little dangling thing that's next to the, the trigger. And what the bad lever does is basically when you want to uh, get the rifle into battery, you just flip on that lever below that and that will basically pull the uh, bolt carrier group into the chamber, okay? And then uh, for the mag release, I also replaced the mag release with velocities. Um, um, let's see which way is this the other way from? You can see this. This is a extended mag release um, so that if you're uh, basically not able to reach it while you're holding on to the hand, I mean to the rifle, you can use your index finger and press on the mag magazine release. It's extended out. The other thing I replaced was um, the safety, and this is a uh, instead of the standard safety that they had on this, I replaced that one out also. Uh, it's it's on. Um, dual side safety, so the left and right hand side the safety. And finally, I replaced the charging handle. The charging handle over here is a BCM uh, charging handle. So, and the, finally the stock, uh, for those of you who want to know what the stock is, that is a Magpul SL series, okay? So uh, pretty much everything else uh, uh, is you know standard. I forgot even the hand grip is also a Magpul. Um, so the only two things that Magpul here is the hand grip and the stock. So I wanted to sort of uh, put this on view for a second while I talk to you about the next topic. We as citizens, we have the right to bear arms, you know, and basically when you take our rights away, thinking that basically we are at fault, we are not at fault. The constitution gives us the right to bear arms. And the topic always comes up, why do you need an AR? If you ask me that question, I will always say, I have AR to protect my family and my country, right? In times of where there's no rule of law, right? And so what equates this AR in comparison to using a handgun is when you have multiple people coming at you at the same time, you need something to equate yourself out in co uh, comparison to a gang of uh, people coming to attack you that you can put a stop to this, okay? So the magazine that this, uh, AR can hold, can hold up to 30 rounds uh, and so you have up to 30 rounds to basically use to stop multiple targets before you have to load up again, right? And so it's my right to own it as a citizen. You cannot turn around and say, why do I need? If you basically in, in the <coughs> wrong side of the world basically start defining what my needs are, then you have basically the right to take things away from me without my permission. The constitution gives me the right and you are trying to take the, uh, the right away from me. So we basically are the people that have the right. And you think about it. Why is this particular platform so important? I'm not the only one who has it. The millions of people that own this currently and there are many more people that want this also. Why do you think that is? 
because this is one of the only platforms out there that basically allows you to modify the rifle for your POU purpose of use and think about it the, the, the young generation that basically modified their cars their hot rods they made it really interesting for them to modify their, their cars because the cars had parts that could be modified and this one platform the AR platform is a very popular platform that you can modify anything and everything on this to dress it up to your POU or what you wanted to do for your rifle and you know I also basically would share this with others who have dressed it up too much to the extent that it becomes clunker to carry around you have to understand if you're going to use this you need to have it so that it's light enough for you to use it at the same time that doesn't cause you to basically lose control of your rifle because it's so heavy to carry around right so I try to be as minimalistic as possible, at the same time, practical as possible when I do my mods. Anyhow, um, that's the end of the video. I just wanted to share that with you. As always, subscribe and support the channel. And if you have any questions, do PM me. I'm more than willing to uh, respond to your PMs if you guys are not rude. Uh, there are some assholes that basically send nasty uh, grams to me. I just will delete it. Simple as that. Okay? Thanks so much.